How is it going, guys? Slippery Dream here. Welcome back to my intergalactic adventure series here in modded Minecraft. So, in the last episode, we started doing our bee breeding. And uh, as you can see here in our bee breeding area, I have been quite busy. So, since the last episode, I've spent quite a few hours because it is a painfully slow process uh, breeding up some different bee types, uh, getting a stock of the different... Um, uh, mutation samples and stuff like that. So right now what I've got going here, uh, we had our tropical, um, automated tropical bees going. So as you can see, I've built up quite a stockpile of these. And the main reason I have these is so that they can um, basically produce the silky wisp that we need to, uh, to build some of the stuff later on, like the beekeeping suit. So we have some chocolate frames in there to boost their production. Over here, I've uh, got a couple of imperial bees that we bred up. And these also have chocolate frames, so basically what these produce is royal jelly, which we're going to need later on. And uh, as well as the usual, um, you know, honey drops and wax and stuff like that from the honeycomb. Uh, over here I have a diligent uh, bee going as well. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll need that one too much, just thought I'd get a few uh, of those stocked up. And over here we have the industrial industrious bees, so a couple of these... And what these produce is uh, stringy comb and pollen. I think we're going to need pollen later on as well. So we've got a couple of those going with the uh, with the chocolate frames happening as well. Over here, I've been trying to get some mutations going. So I have a cultivated um, queen in here right now. And over here, I don't have anything in that one. Uh, we've got an unweary uh, queen going in that one. Over here, we've got a noble um, noble princess happening let's just double check that she is going to be breeding with a purebred noble bee so put them in there uh, and over here uh, i have a robust queen happening so in terms of where i am in the mutation gene pool uh because remember, our goal is to get to, to diamond and pl uh, platinum producing bees. So that bee is actually called the valuable bee and the diamond bee. Uh, what we need for those is a couple more uh, mutations to get there. And what we need is a resilient bee, which we get by breeding an imperial and a robust bee together. And then once we've got the resilient, we breed that with the water to get a lapis bee. And then we breed the lapis with an imperial to hopefully get the diamond bee. So that's um that's where we're at at this point in time. So I have the robust queen going here. Um, she is really, really slow in producing um, offspring. So it's been a bit of a painful process there. But over here, I have actually tried to uh, mutate uh, an imperial with a robust to uh, hopefully produce some drones that are give, going to give us some... Um, resilient mutations they might be hybrids but um we'll, we'll hopefully try and get to a resilient from this one um and over here we have the the noble going uh as well i don't know why i've got so many nobles happening but looks like i need some frames here so yeah that reminds me i am getting very very annoyed with having to constantly craft up frames all the time it's taking a lot of resources and stuff like that like um i do have quite a lot of um cocoa now for the chocolate frames as you can see nearly four thousand from our from our automated farm which is awesome uh the cotton is very very much slower in uh, in producing um cotton buds for us not cotton buds you know what i mean producing cotton is much much slower and we use that to make the string so but anyway we, we seem to be managing okay with that the trouble is that the seeds man the seeds take forever to squeeze and uh yeah it is basically a pain in the neck so i've got a bit of a plan in mind it's a bit of a crazy plan but we're going to try something with that to try and get another way of obtaining uh frames but before we go down that path uh what i actually want to do is i want to check my trees here so you might remember we planted the uh the oaks and the silver birches uh, all around the outside of the uh, the bee breeding area. So hopefully the bees are going to pollinate these and they're going to mutate um, the trees so that we can hopefully get some different varieties of trees because we still want to get some more efficient uh, seeds so we can get more seed or more quickly. <laughs> Trust me, I really, really want to get some better seeds than those watermelon seeds. So uh, I haven't actually checked these since we started. It has been quite a long time 
So hopefully we have some mutations happening. And what's going to allow us to see the mutations is if we actually uh, wear these spectacles. And uh, hopefully, as you can see there, straight away we can see some silver leaves. So they, they should be the mutated leaves. And I think we can harvest those if we use a grafter. So I've got a couple of grafters already from, um, from the Apiarist Villager that we uh, came across ages ago in the series. I'm just going to maybe craft up a couple of extras as well because these only last about four or five hits before they before they wear out. Let's just see. So there's two grafters in the game. This one here you can't actually craft. You can only get that from villager trading with an apiarist villager. So we can craft this one though. And I imagine that that one lasts longer or something like that. I'm sure it's got some special benefits. So we'll just craft up a bunch of those and uh, head on over here. Let's just check the farm quickly and make sure it's got plenty of fertilizer. Oh, it's out of fertilizer. So we better put some more fertilizer in there. Um, I might even have some. There's a little bit there. Yeah, because it doesn't operate with our fertilizer, unfortunately. I wish uh, I wish it held more than just one, one thing of it. But anyway, that should keep on producing stuff for us. All right, now we were going to um, harvest these mutated leaves and see what we can get out of these. So remember, basically the first step uh, that we want to get to in trying to get the walnut and chestnut tree uh, so we can get those awesome um, seeds that produce a lot of seed oil is we want to get the uh, the silver lime. So let's see what we got there. We got a common beech sapling by the looks of it. So it must just be a little bit of a chance. We got an apple oak sapling. Uh, there we go, silver lime sapling. Awesome. That is epic. So we've got at least one there. Let's see what else we can get. There's another apple oak. And I think that was an apple oak as well. Now we've got quite a few mutations here. Come on. Give me more of those silver limes. One up there. Actually, there's a couple up here. Man, we got a lot of mutations. It's, it's awesome. Cool. So I'll probably only need about six or seven so that we can replant them in the same location. Oops. Just fell down the bank. Let's grab these ones. Let's just check how many we have now. We've got five. So let's keep going till we get about six or seven of them. There's six. Not sure what that one was. I've almost got too many of these things. Well, we got six. That might be enough. So I believe what we have to do to get to the next tree that we want in the um in the gene pool to get to chestnuts or walnuts is uh, we need to actually mutate these silver lime saplings with uh, the silver birches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop down the oaks. Let's grab these guys. Probably should have made some extra grafters so I don't waste all those mutated leaves. Come to think of it. Never mind. I think there's some pretty cool trees as well. Like the next tree we're going to try and get is the cherry tree. And we can even use the cherries, I think, for seeds. They, they're they probably going to be better for the seed oil than the, than the regular. Ooh, look at that sunset. Beautiful stuff. Um, then the regular watermelon seeds. Let's just make up some more grafters. One, two, three, four. That should do. Put that in there. Get rid of the apple oak. We got some common birches as well. That's kind of interesting. I better sleep through the night so the bees that I have that aren't nocturnal will still be happy. There we go. All right. 
So let's just quickly see if we can get the mutations. Well, that's the silver birch there. Mainly want to get the ones from the oak tree. Before it disappears. Yeah, I wasn't sure how quickly they would start mutating, but it looks like they mutate um, fairly frequently. Can't quite reach that one. Anyway, we've got 10, so that's that's good. Now, what we're going to do before we plant these is we're going to run them through the tree -alizer. So as you can see, silver lime. And gives us some other information that I don't really care about right now. As long as they grow, that is the main thing. So I'm going to stick them down here. And um, then we'll probably bone mill them as well. And then the bees can do their magic. Pollinate them. Um, let's see. That one there, I guess. Put it out there. Okay, so we need bone mill. I think I had some bone mill in here actually. I think. Yep. Got some apples as a bonus. Okay, let's see if we can get these to grow. Oh, look at that. Looks kind of nice. That one might might have to be moved. We'll move it. Got a lot of flowers growing around here now because the bees actually um the bees actually cause flowers to pop up every now and then. Some pretty cool flowers as well, like the um uh, let's just put this down. Silver lime. Grow. Um, some pretty cool flowers as well, like these ones right here. These glow flowers. Usually they're they're only in the twilight forest, but it looks like um, the beehives cause those to grow randomly as well. There we go. All right, so we'll leave those to get pollinated. I'm going to chuck uh, all the spares in to my ME system. Uh, I'll grab those out. And chuck those in there. All right, so let's just have a quick look over here and see what's happening with our B mutations. So we got a resilient princess. So, um, yeah, the resilient is what we were after. So let's just see if she's, um, she's probably a hybrid, but resilient, robust, resilient, robust, imperial, put that to the side and a resilient imperial. So we'll try bringing these two together and hopefully we get another resilient out of that. So I'll chuck those in there. They've still got the soul frames, so that's all good. And I'll chuck the, actually this guy here, I don't really want, so we'll probably... Um, we'll probably put in him in here for now, just in ca case we need a another robust. And I'll just quickly check the rest of these. Those don't need checking. Okay, we got the pristine. This is the unweary. Again, the unweary is not really a bee that I super desperately need, but um, and over here we have the cultivated. So I can probably automate that because it looks like the cultivated is... Um, pretty much purebred now. Let's uh, grab one of those. Grab that and that. Um, wooden transport pipe out the back. Otaki yeah, gate goes on there. That on there. And... Grab one of those. Whoops. Oh god, stuff flying everywhere. I need another one of these. Actually, what's in there? Nothing? 
Was it the cultivated? Yeah, the cultivated. Okay. So I want this to be black is gonna be bees. Which I went past like an idiot. Okay. And then red is gonna be anything. So that's gonna go in there. They they're gonna cycle through, which is fine. Okay, let's chuck this in here to get processed. I don't really need the flour. Um, they're all good. Unruly. Breed that up. I think everything else is fine. Okay, so what we're going to do now, guys, is we are going to go and kidnap a villager. So this is the plan, right? Um, the frame. The frame situation is a little bit annoying having to constantly craft frames like means i have to constantly get the seed oil going uh, which i've run out of again here as you can see i have to come over here i have to get some string i have to get some uh some impregnated sticks all of that stuff is kind of annoying it's still going to be necessary for the chocolate frames and the soul frames i guess but um the other type of frame that we can get uh, we can actually get from uh, villager trading. And remember how I said that grafter, the upgraded grafter, we can also get from villager trading. So you know what? I'm actually going to go and we're going to try and find a couple of apiarist villagers. And we're going to kidnap those suckers and bring them back here. And uh, I'm going to actually, uh, yeah, we'll lasso their asses. So <laughs> um, basically, um, I've got a few villagers around the place that I've marked in my travels. So what we're going to do is we're going to head out to one of those. And uh, look around and see if we can um, find a couple of apiarists to bring back. Hopefully we can lasso them. I'm not super sure about this. Um, but we'll see how we go. And usually what happens to the villagers is they basically turn into ghost towns after I've, I've done with them. Uh, but hopefully we can find a few of the ones that are further out that still have villagers alive in them. I'm just going to get the rest of my... Um, the rest of my quantum armor on... Let's just put that on as well. Okay, so let's um let's go see what we can find. We might head out in this direction. Um I'm not sure how far it is, but we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. I can see that there's uh, a village out in this direction, so we might head for that one. 1200 blocks. Oh my god. There's another couple of villages over in that direction as well. So we'll probably go over there if we don't get what we want. Usually villages, uh, if they have one, which they don't always, um, but if they do have an apiarist villager, um, usually, usually there's only a single one. So I want to get a couple of them. Okay, this looks like uh, right here we got um, a couple of apiaries as well. I might as well... Might as well pinch these guys. What do we got here? Modest Queen. Grab your frames. Thank you very much. Let's see. Okay, we'll get our lasso ready. So first of all, I want to check and make sure it's the right villagers. So there's a green guy here. Okay, the green guy. Is it this guy? Oh! Are they both apiarists? That guy's an apiarist for sure's. So I'll grab him. Yoink. <laughs> this guy's wearing an apiarist outfit, so he's got to be an apiarist, right? What do they got in here? I'll take all of this stuff. Nice. Well, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> there you go. It looks like we do get um, more than one apiarist. It's weird because they were wearing different outfits. That's what made me think that um, um, they were different kinds of uh, kinds of villager. Okay, now how do we get home from here? I think it's over in this direction. Okay, guys, we're just about back at our base now. I um, spotted a couple of hives on the way here. So we actually got some forest uh, and meadows. Bees and stuff like that. You can never have too many princesses I've found in bee breeding. But uh, we have our couple of uh, villagers here. So hopefully we're going to be able to use these villagers to trade with um, to get 
our apiarist stuff, um, those frames and uh, the grafter as well. So um, I've prepared an area <laughs> for these guys to uh, to hang out in and I've tried to make it as comfortable as I can. So it's, you know, it's not exactly a prison cell here. There's a couple of pitches um, that I've put up here for them. Um, I've even got a radio over here if they want to play themselves a tune to keep themselves occupied. Maybe dance or something like that. But yeah, we're going to put them in these little uh, these little designated areas, let's call them. Um, so they don't escape. Let's put this one in here. There we go. And we'll put the other one over here. Hopefully they're far enough apart that they won't start breeding and just like overpopulate the place with villagers. So um, let's uh, let's check these guys out. So this guy wants wheat and he will give me a frozen comb. And over here, this guy wants uh, two emeralds for a proven grafter. That's quite pricey, but um, let's go for it. Remember, we want to get the um, we want to get the uh, how, mu how much wheat did this guy want? We want to get them to actually... Oh, God, that guy's escaped already. How did you get out? Maybe he was like half... Yeah, he's not quite... Oh, my God, dude. There you go. All right, hopefully he's like not halfway through. He's not glitching out of there. But, uh, yeah, he wanted two wheat. So we'll give him two wheat. And he'll give us that. Thank you very much. Uh, what else is he going to offer us? Let's just... Chuck that stuff out. Um, put those in there as well. Uh, is that all the dude's going to offer me? Oh, here we go. That's what I want, the proven frame. So we need some emeralds. Um, emeralds. I don't have a lot of emeralds, so hopefully, um, hopefully he gives us some choices in terms of offering stuff for... Um, these things but there you go thank you and oh he's offering me the same deal again all right i'm just gonna put these in here in those back i don't have much space in my inventory just chuck all these frames in here and i'll give you oh I don't want that. Thank you. They stack. That's interesting because they don't usually stack. So let's see what this guy's offering over here. He's offering me the Proven Grafter, which is actually pretty cool. So I'll grab one of those. And I might get a couple of them, actually. I don't know how long these, these ones last. Quite expensive, though. Is that all he's going to offer me? Yeah, looks looks like all he offers right now. So I'll put these in there. And see if this guy offers anything else. He offers the proven frames. So it looks like we can just basically give him a ton of, um, of uh, emeralds to get the... Um, to get the proven frames, which is pretty sweet. So we should have a good stockpile of these for a while. Now, they are quite noisy, aren't they? That's why I'm keeping them down here where I can't actually hear them. So, yeah. They can talk to themselves, keep themselves happy down there. Let's head back up top to our bee breeding area. So we've got a bunch of these proven frames now, which is sweet. Plus we have that awesome grafter, so I'm happy about that. We should give it a try, actually. Let's just put these frames in here. All right, so I think we've got enough frames to last us for a little while here. And uh, I want to try out these uh, proven grafters as well. So we might as well run around and um, try and uh, remove all of the mutated leaves. So we have, oh, look at that tree. The nice green, lush green looking color. I don't see any uh, mutated leaves up here. There's a couple underneath, I think. So we might check those out just to make sure we've Cleared out all the old mutations to uh, to make room for new ones. I don't see any. I thought there was one around here. Maybe I was imagining things. I might have been looking at the um, silver birch bark, which is a silvery kind of color. I don't know if all the mutations are silver. That they probably are because we got a few different trees out of those those silver looking ones. 
Anyway, looks like there's no mutations. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm not wearing my spectacles, so... That's probably why we're not seeing any mutations. Let's try now. Yeah. There is mutations after all. Let's just grab... Grab these mutations. This one through here. So I'll try and get all the mutated leaves because I want to leave um, leave it fresh so we can get hopefully the cherry the cherry saplings. Oh, cherry sapling, nice. Groovy. All right. So, uh, yeah, we might replant that. Then we can move on to the next tree that we want to, that we want to mutate. Let's just check underneath here, see if there's any, this one, those, these two right here. Let's grab those. I don't know if I got any saplings out of those two. Can't see any back here. This one right there. Okay, I think that's all of them. So, um, let's see what we got. We've got uh, two silver limes. They look like maybe slightly different species. We got one hill, che hill cherry sapling. Let's just trialize this one. Uh, purebred hill cherry. That's pretty nice. Okay, we'll um, we'll put that in here for now. I'm getting that poison effect. I'd better put my um, suit back on. That's better. Okay, so let's check out our mutations. This one over here, we have the resilient robust. So looks like we might be slowly purifying the... Uh, that's re robust resilient and resilient imperial. Interesting. Um, all right, we'll whack them back in there. Hopefully it keeps purifying and we get a resilient out of that one. Let's see what else we've got here. This one I didn't have any bees in. That should be going through and giving me the cultivated. And over here we have the, the unweary going. Um, this one was the noble. And we should have a bunch of product in here as well. So I'll check that in a second, guys. So yeah, I'm going to keep on um, like breeding these bees and getting mutations. And I'm also going to plant, uh, maybe maybe I'll plant the uh, that one cherry tree. And hopefully we can start getting some more mutation, mutated um, trees so we can get some more cherry trees to plant down as well uh, to move on to the next, uh, the next tree that we need to, uh, to get to the walnut and, uh, and chestnut trees. All right, guys. So I'll be back. Uh, in a little while. See you guys then. All right, we are back, guys. So I have been doing a ton of bee breeding. It's taken many, many hours to get to this point, but we now have a pure strain of the resilient bee over here in this uh, apiary. And I'm just building up a stock of these resilient drones because we're going to need those for some further bee breeding to eventually get to the diamond uh, bee. And then I also want to get to the uh, the valuable bee, which produces platinum combs that gives us uh, iridium. So anyway, we're getting actually closer to the diamond bee because uh, once I have a resilient enough resilient bees, I'm going to breed these um, with, I think it is a watery princess. So I've got a few of those, but not too many. So I want to make sure I've got plenty of resilient drones before we start trying that so we don't actually accidentally lose them anyway once we have that we can uh, breed the watery uh, princess with a resilient drone until we get um, a lapis bee and then we can breed the lapis bee i think it's with an imperial bee to have a chance of getting a diamond bee but once you get up into these higher tier bees there's actually a lower chance of mutation so to get the resilient queen it was a 15 percent chance of mutation not counting the soul frames and then it's uh, like a five percent chance after this to get to the lapis and the diamond bees. So anyway, that's where we're at right now. Um, I also have decided to um, uh, start 
going down the uh, the branch towards the valuable bee as well as the diamond bee. Uh, let's just sleep through the night. Not all of my bees are nocturnal, unfortunately. And anyway, so basically what I'm going to need to do that is I'm going to need a uh, forest, I think it is. So let's try, try to find a pretty decent forest. Um, we'll find a forest princess here. There's a pristine one. And if I breed a forest with one of these resilience, let's just grab a couple of my stockpile out of here. And we'll put them in here when this, um, when this noble queen is finished. She's nearly done there. Let's just go check over on this hive. So we've got some Imperials going there. That's cultivated. Uh, noble, unwary, robust, tolerant. And my production bees here, the tropical, which is producing the silky comb. So we can make the silky wisps. And over here we have the Imperials going. Getting me that royal jelly and stuff like that. And we have the wintry bee. Uh, which I'm basically going to stock of those because they're good to, to breed the four times trait into other bees. And over here I have my industrial producing pollen and stringy combs and stuff like that. So I've been processing all of the materials as we've been getting them in, um, in the centrifuge here. So we are getting a bit of a stockpile going of uh, resources over here. You can see I've got um, quite a few honey drops. Um, I've got tons and tons of beeswax. I've got some raw jelly happening there. We've got nearly two stacks of silk wisps, which is really good. I might actually try and use those. I've been trying to get enough to make an apiary suit, so I don't have to worry about getting stung by bees all the time. But um, I'm not sure if we've quite got enough yet. We might just <clears throat> we might just test that out and see if we can make up the apiary suit pretty soon. Let's just go check over here. Uh, the noble queen is still going. So yeah, I got uh, <clears throat> while I was waiting for the bees to breed and stuff like that. I got a chance to um, build a little path down down the cliffside here to uh, to the river to the river's edge. I think it's pretty nice to come down here and chill out away from the buzzing of the many bees. And the other thing is um, with my tree farm and my tree breeding, um, you can see I've got quite a few more cherry trees now, which is awesome. So I'm trying to get those to mutate with the silver limes to try and get the um, the walnut and eventually. The chestnut tree is gone, and I also put a cherry tree here in my uh, manual farm. Hopefully this thing will eventually start harvesting the cherries. I'm not super sure if it will start doing that for it. Theoretically it should, but but we'll wait and see. So far I haven't, I don't think I've got, I don't think I've got any cherries there, unless they're called something different in here. But um, we'll wait and see on that one. All right, now while we're waiting for that, uh, for that noble bee to die out, um, what I am going to do is probably put on my spectacles and we'll check because I'm pretty sure I've got some mutations there that we can check out to see um, if we can get ourselves um, some new mutated tree species. Now that I've practically ran out of melons for um, <laughs> for seeds for the squeezer. I am going to have to find, um, I mean, I can grow, I can grow more melons, but, um, oh, we've got some cherries there. That's pretty sweet, but I'd rather have these, uh, more efficient types of trees dropping walnuts and stuff for me. Getting some cherry saplings. It's another one. I'm getting tons of them. I'm stuck under this tree. You can see what we've got over here. Quite a few mutated leaves going. Silver lime. Little cherry. Wild cherry sapling. Oh, there's a walnut tree right there. Sweet. Let's um let's trialize that. Sweet, it's a purebred. It's purebred as well, which is really, really nice. So it uh, tolerates planes, supports nuts, and prunes poms. Is that pomegranates? Not quite sure what that is. So it produces walnuts for us. That's pretty goddamn awesome. So hopefully we can get a bunch of those happening. I don't know if you if you chop them down, whether you get extra saplings from them. I mean Theoretically, you should, right? 
But I'm a little bit scared to do that if it destroys the tree and I don't have anything left over. We could try that out though. Once we once we grow it. It's another hill cherry sapling. So I might just plant this out here for the time being. I can't see any more mutated leaves. I might be missing a couple, but um, what I might do is I might plant it. Let's have a look. We'll plant it. I'll see if I've got any birch trees left back around here. Looks like I haven't. So um, where will we put it? Maybe right here. Sacrifice this cherry tree. So if we're getting saplings out of this, it's a bit hard to tell because I've already got tons of them. Let's just chuck all of these in here. Yep, I'm definitely getting saplings here, so that's we can um we should be able to easily get more um Easily get more saplings by just like destroying the leaves like this. So we got, well, we got one anyway, but <laughs> let's plant this uh, common walnut sapling down here. Hopefully we can get this uh, to mutate to the chestnut. To be honest, I think that the chestnut and the walnut produce the same amount of um, seed oil per nut, but I don't know. Because the um, the chestnut's a high tier tree, maybe it produces more fruit or something like that. Is this gonna grow? Why you no grow? Something overhanging. Let's just move it a little bit. Um, let's move it. I don't know. There. Grow. Doesn't want to grow, does it? That's weird. the problem here tree doesn't like that spot either that's strange unless it needs a particular type of average let's see planes tolerates planes growth light it looks like it should grow fine here Just doesn't want to grow, does it? All right, you know what? We'll maybe find another spot for it. Let's um try it next to this, next to these two cherry trees here. Just get rid of these leaves. Hopefully it's going to grow here for me. See, I'm just a bit worried that this thing is not going to grow. Unless they're huge. They could be massive. Oh, you know what it is? Now I think of it, I think you have to actually plant these like four, um, four saplings in a square to actually get them to grow. So we'll come back to that when we get a few extras. Okay, guys, well, we're going to do a bit more breeding, and uh, we'll be coming back shortly. I'm also going to try to get enough silk wisps going so that we can hopefully get the apiarist outfit um, made up, because uh, as you can probably tell right now, I am getting poisoned constantly by these bee stings, and it is not pleasant. So, uh, so I don't have to rely on my quantum suit. We'll try and get the Apiarist outfit going, but uh, I'll be back after a while when we've bred up a few extra mutations. All right, guys, welcome back. Time for another update. So what we're going to be doing here first is we're going to be checking our mutated trees to try and see if we've managed to mutate the chestnut tree. So to do that, we're going to be uh, putting on our spectacles again. Oh, look at all those lovely gray mutated leaves. So let's... um. 
Let's start checking these um, leaves and see if we can get the elusive uh, sweet chestnut variation so that we can start growing those and getting all the uh, all the chestnuts so we can uh, basically get tons of the uh, the seed oil out of those. Oh, walnut saplings. I'll just uh, collect a whole bunch of these. And then we'll check and see if we've we got any uh, chestnuts. These are uh, these walnuts are pretty good as well, but I I believe the chestnut is like the ultimate, so we might as well try and get the ultimate the ultimate tree mutation happening. Let's keep checking all of these. So they're probably filling up my inventory here. Let's um. Let's just check, see what we've got here. So we have walnuts, we have silver limes, we have hill cherries, sweet chestnut. That's the one I wanted. And it looks like we've got six of them, which is awesome. Let's get rid of the other ones here. I'll hang on to the walnuts. We can actually, what's that one? Butternut sapling. So we need four of these uh, sweet chestnut saplings in order to grow the actual tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically try and grow one tree. Then I'm going to harvest that and get extra saplings until we've got enough to get at least two trees happening. And then what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to uh, modify the farm so that, so that it grows these and collects these automatically for us. So that is pretty awesome. Now let's, um, let's just take this and put our spectacles back in there. Silver lime. Let's just get rid of that. And I'll put these um these walnuts in here so we can squeeze those. All right. Now, as far as the bee breeding goes, we're slowly getting to the end game here with our bee breeding. So uh, basically, where we're at right now is the key bees that we've managed to breed up is I've been trying to modify my basic water uh, hive bees here to try and get some better traits on the actual bees. So uh, what I've been trying to do is to get some nocturnal traits and stuff like that on them, get them to produce extra drones and things like that. Uh, so that's why I've, uh, I've got this going here. So in here, these are the water drones that I've got right now. If we have a look at these in the bee Eliza, um they let's have a look here they are flyers so so that's fine that i think that means that they can um breed during the rain but we still haven't got the nocturnal or the cave consistently in there but we can maybe do that later on when we've got to uh, eventually to our diamond bees and stuff like that and uh the fertility is not that great either but oh well it's slightly improved from the original the original water drones as well but anyway the other key bees that i've got here if we take a look over here um i have the corroded bee and the resilient bee so basically in order to get to diamond bees uh from where i am right now what we need to do is we need to actually combine the resilient with the water bee to get a lapis bee and then we need to combine the lapis with the imperial which i already have a bunch of to get um a chance of getting the diamond bee and then we're going to be extremely happy because that is going to be awesome to produce diamonds for us in terms of the iridium bee which is called the precious bee basically for that one what we need is we need the um the corroded which i believe i have here somewhere this one here we've bred up the corroded and i need to combine that with the imperial as well to get the glittering bee and then i need to get the rusty bee again where is it the rusty bee over here and combine that with the Imperial to get the Shining. And then I do Shining and Glittering to get the Valuable Bee. So that's pretty much the end game bee out of all of our bee, uh, breeding process. So yeah, that's where we are right now, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically plant some of these chestnut trees and get them in the farm. And then we can start producing a whole bunch of seed oil um, over in our seed oil production area right here. So we can basically get a ton of seed oil happening um, very, very quickly and efficiently. So that is going to be awesome. So just sleep through the night here in a second. But uh, yeah, I'll be back shortly, guys, after we've done a little bit more breeding to get toward the lapis, the glittering and the shining bees.
All right, so guys, what I've done with those uh, chestnut saplings is I've actually modified my farm over here. Uh, as you can see here, I've actually uh, put two orchards in where my carrot farm and my uh, tree farm used to be. Uh, and I've planted a couple of these uh, sweet chestnut trees down here. So basically what's, what's happening here is uh, they are growing chestnuts. And as they ripen, the farm is automatically harvesting those and uh, sending them back to uh, to my ME system. So if we uh, check out the uh, the amount of chestnuts I have in here now, I'm getting quite a lot of these. So we can actually squeeze those to get a ton of seed oil, which is really, really handy for uh, producing frames and some of the other stuff later on that we're going to need it for as well. Now... I think it's long past time that we made ourselves an apiary suit as well. Now that I've slowly been getting some silk wisps going, it has taken quite a long time. I've spent a long time breeding bees, and uh, this is the sum total of all the silk wisps I have gathered. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty slow process. That's actually string. Um... So wisps, okay. Now I'm also going to be grabbing some of my honeydew here and also some of my regular honey drops. By the way, check it out. Citrus swallowtail. So I've actually found um found a butterfly. And you can actually um there's actually a whole bunch of different kinds of butterflies that actually um sort of appear in the world once you start breeding trees and stuff like that. And you can actually catch them in the scoop, which is pretty cool. So I might start collecting some of those because I think it's pretty awesome. But anyway, oh, the other thing that I'll show you guys as well is over here, I've, I've automated the uh, water, uh, the water bee production. And uh, awesomely, I have managed to actually breed in some traits. You might remember I was trying to get um, the... Fertility trait, so I have four times fertility, which is the max now on this, and I also have uh, the nocturnal trait, so they can breed uh, during the night. I don't have to sleep through the night to get these guys to breed, and that's going to be handy, not because I'm going to be using water bees too much later on, but um, basically what these are going to be uh, doing is they're going to be breeding with the resilient bees to get me the lapis bee, and then we're going to use that to get the diamond bee. So hopefully those traits will be bred through all the way through to the diamond bee, and we can have a really awesome diamond bee once we get uh, once we get that far. But uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make myself an apiary suit so we don't have to keep uh, putting up with the bee stings and stuff like that. And uh, if we take a look at the recipe for this, um, basically it uses these woven silk panels and these are made with silk wisps and basically in the carpenter with some water. So... The carpenter I have in my workshop here, I have loaded with water. We should be able to make a bunch of these, um, these silk wisps. So basically we just put them in like this. Um, this is the pattern we have to put in. And then I'll put those in there. And it should just produce the whole bunch of those. Get those I'll just leave that running. Now, also downstairs, what I've done is, uh, because we're going to need it eventually for making our um, upgraded apiaries and stuff like that, I've started getting some production going here of uh, the honey. And uh, basically back here I have um, a squeezer, and here I have a chest. So basically I chuck all my honey stuff in here, and that goes through into the squeezer, and that starts producing the, uh, the honey for us, the liquid honey and the side, the side um, product of the propolis as well, which I guess we're going to use for some other stuff later on. But yeah, so that is going to produce some some honey for us. I haven't automated feeding the, the honey drops through to that just yet, but uh, maybe I'll do that eventually. It's pretty easy to just stick them in the chest anyway. So let's just see here. We've got 16. We're getting a few of these woven silk panels um made up here so let's see if we can make some some of this armor let's start with the the hat um which is like this beautiful and then we have i think the hat allows you to see the mutated leaves in the trees as well without using the spectacles which is pretty cool um then we have the let's just put those in there 
So we can shift click. Um, boots. I'm going to need some more. Let's just go see how we're going. 32. Wow. Oh, it's run out of water. I was like, damn, is it out of silk wisps already? So let's stick some, uh, some water in there. I didn't expect it to use that much water, but I guess, uh, I guess it does. There's a few more of those. We might be able to make the next part. We'll make the boots up because they're nice and cheap, and then we'll just have the the chest piece, which and the and the pants. So that's going to be <clears throat> seven and eight, fifteen, fifteen in total. Yeah, I think we're going to need more silk wisps. Actually, unfortunately, it is um. It's just ridiculously expensive to make to make the apiary suit, especially since like it's taken me um nearly at the point where we're only a few steps away from actually getting the end game bees anyway. Where um I can only make half of an apiary suit. I mean I haven't been focusing super hard on getting the silk wisp, but but I do have two beehives dedicated to it with the tropical bees, so I don't know. I might even have a few more out there that we could um that we could grab out of the beehive. I'll go I'll go have a look. Let's go see if I had any extras over here. So yeah, the tropical bees are the ones that produce that stuff, but nothing. Okay, they need some frames. So I'm going to put some chocolate frames in there for the production side of things. I actually, chocolate frames... These are soul frames. Stupid. These are the ones I want right here. Some of those in there. Alright guys, so what I'm going to start doing now is, uh, while we're waiting for, uh, you know, the eventual, eventually to get enough silk wisps going, I'll put my, um, at least, oh, we already made those, so we just need the, we just need the pants, don't we? So that was seven. I forgot I'd made that already, so I think we had two, we might be closer than I thought to getting the last piece of that armor. But we still have to wait. We still have to wait on these stupid bees to produce some more silk wisps for me. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to work on our next mutations. So, looks like most of my bee, uh, my apiaries are taken up with bees right now. But let's see, Imperials, Unweary. I'm not sure I need the Unweary right now, so we might actually, I've got a lot of those anyway, I take that one out, I take those proven frames out, and we'll put in some of these soul frames so we can get higher chance of mutation, um, so I don't want to automate this, I'm just going to take that off, take that, Okay, so we'll put those in there. Now the first one that we might work on, I think, is to get the uh, the corroded we already have, don't we? I think we already had the corroded. Yep. So basically what we want is the glittering. Um, no, sorry. If we work on the if we work on the diamond first, we need the glittering for the for the valuable bee. So uh, there's so much to remember, guys, but uh yeah, we're gonna go resilient water to try and get lapis. So let's grab some resilient, some resilient bees. I've got tons of these drones here, tons and tons of them actually. And we have the the princess as well. 
So, let's see. I've got a lot of drones of both, both species, but... Actually, I don't have too many drones of this one, do I? I might have to let that... Um... I might have to let this one keep going for a bit to produce the, um... To produce some extras with those, with those water drones, because it looks like I'm a bit short of those, come to think of it. So, let's see here. I'll grab these out of here anyway. And what we might work on instead... Let's just sleep through the night here. While we're, we're waiting for the water drones to breed up with that trait that I'm, I want to hang on to. Is we might go the Rusty Imperial route to get... Actually... Rusty Imperial, yeah, we want this Shining Bee, so... Rusty and Imperial. Here's the Rusty, let's have a look here. So I've got quite a few Rusties. Yep, tons of them. Alright, so I'll grab some of those. We'll grab the Rusty Queen out of there. And let's just disable this. Oops. that back in there. <clears throat> so put the rusties in here and unwary. Okay, so what we wanted to do was rusty and imperial. So we need some spare imperial bees. Which we have quite a few of. I'll grab half of these ones. I don't think these have super great traits in them, but let's have a look here. Honey. Um. So, two, two times fertility, and they're diurnal only, which is not real great, actually, but, um, resilient. Okay, so, I'll use the rusty, this one right here, let's take these out of there, and I'll grab some more of these soul frames. Okay, so basically we wanted to go um, Rusty and Imperial. Don't want to confuse myself too much here. Let's just chuck these combs in there. See if there's any more. Basically that silky comb is the one that gives us the um, silk wisps once it's been processed, so there's a few silk wisps in there silky propolis all sorts of stuff anyway, back to this, so what we want to do is let's see, how are we going to do this, we've got the imperial drones and we've got the rusty. Hey, what about those ones? Unweary. Let's just chuck those in there. Um, Imperial and rusty. So we'll start with the rusty queen. Breed her with the imperial drone, and that should give us a chance. Um, of getting the shining, the shining bee. It might take us a while. There's another butterfly. See that? It's like a brown looking one. I don't know if we can, don't know if we can catch that one. Let's see. Where's our scoop? They're kind of a little bit fiddly to catch, but let's see. Where'd it go? Taken off. Oh, there it is. Can I, can I catch it? Come on! Yes, we got it! We got it! 
<laughs> awesome. I wonder if they, um, they move like that if you put them in frames. I might create, like, a butterfly collection somewhere eventually if I get enough of them, but... Alright, we're gonna have to wait on this, guys, to, to wait and see what we get out of this, but... I'm con gonna continue on with the breeding to try to get to the shining, the glittering, uh, the lapis, uh, and the lapis bees to get to our... Almost to our final stage of getting the diamond and the valuable bees bred up. So, uh, could take a while, but I'll be back shortly when we've made some progress. Um, so, guys, we have a bit of a problem here. <laughs> check out, check out, check out how many butterflies we have right now. There are literally thousands and thousands of butterflies. It is lagging so bad right now, I can hardly even move in the, in the world right now. There are thousands of these forestry butterflies. I said they were cool before, and they were, but now we've got a problem. So, <laughs> look at this. I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm going to have to um, use, a, use a command to kill all the butterflies here because uh, I literally can't play like this. The lag is just simply too bad. I think it's a bug with forestry. Another update time, guys. So over here, what I was doing is I was uh, using a corroded and imperial uh, be to try and breed up a glittering bee and uh, it took me about five or six tries but eventually I got this glittering drone here which is pretty cool so we're going to check him out and just uh, be allies this bee where is it glittering drone so it's uh it's a hybrid glittering imperial but hopefully we can breed the glittering part of it out and Look at those traits, that will be awesome if I can keep those. One times fertility is really, really bad though. Oh well, it's a starting point for us. Over here, uh, what I was doing is I was breeding the rusty and imperial to try to get the shining, <laughs> the shining uh, bee. And uh, we got that first try, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's check, check out this one here. And shining... One times fertility. Yeah, it's a hybrid again. They usually are the first time you um, mutate them. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep breeding these up and hopefully um, we'll be able to get a purebred shining bee. These might even be hybrids as well. Let's just have a look. Uh, Imperial. No, it's a hybrid, but it's not a shining hybrid. That's the same Imperial Rusty. Okay, so I'm going to keep working on these mutations here, guys. Uh, I also had to, by the way, I had to remove a lot of the, um, a lot of the trees that I had planted here because they had all of the, um, all of the leaves that had been, um, pollinated by the bees, uh, by the butterflies and the bees and stuff like that. And, uh, they cause, they cause a lot of lag. They actually, um, I believe that they actually... Are entities in the world so um, for that reason I chopped down most of the trees I had here and I just planted these cherry blossom trees there's another butterfly right there hopefully that one doesn't multiply too much stupid butterflies <laughs> but yeah anyway I did reduce the number of spawns um, and I can always issue the kill command if I need to get get rid of them if they do start multiplying again like they did before causing a butterfly plague all right, anyway, let's keep going with the uh, the mutations here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the... Over here we had the uh, the Shining. So I'll put the Shining back in there with the Imperial. And hopefully that will give us... Um, hopefully eventually we'll be able to get a purebred Shining out of this one. And over here I'll do something similar. What I'll do is I'll take the um, the Corroded... And the glittering, and see what we get out of that. So, yeah, we'll just keep going and uh, we'll keep breeding, and hopefully, we can get um, the purebred glittering and shining, and then we'll be able to actually try and breed those together to get the valuable bee for the iridium production. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to get a lapis 
But that was water and resilient, and I'm still kind of getting a stockpile of the water, the water bees here. So um, with this trade on them that I've bred into them, so um, that probably might take a little longer to get a good stockpile. Probably go for about a full stack of those because it takes you go through quite a lot when you're breeding the bees. All right, so I'll be back shortly when I have an update, guys. All right, guys, another quick update. And uh, with my bee breeding, I have managed finally to uh, get the uh, purebred glittering bees going here and over here. Uh, these ones took the longest, the shining uh, bees. I have those uh, now, so they are purebred. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to get a stockpile of those, probably about a stack of those, so that we can then breed uh, those up uh, to get, I think the shining and the glittering together give us the valuable valuable bee for the iridium ore. And I still need to get the lapis bee, so I do have enough of these water bees now to start that, um, start attempting that mutation. So basically it's the water drone and the resilient um and the, the uh, resilient bee that I need to breed up to get that mutation. So I might actually start doing that now. And I might actually use the uh, the water queen. Uh, you might remember these are the ones that I bred those really good traits into. Actually, you know what? I might use the, uh, the drones instead and use the resilient queen. Now, if I can remember what I did with the resilient bees, I think the, my, I put them here in... Um, in the index, uh, let's have a look here. I wish this was, uh, I wish you could search this by name because there's a lot of bees in here now. I think they're a gray, I think they're a dark gray looking bee from memory. I, I could be wrong though. Let's just have a look through here. See if we can find them. Rocky, they look sort of like the Rockies. Robust from memory. Here we go. Yeah, this is what I want. So I got 64 drones. I'm going to take those out. Uh, we want the pristine stock. So I do have a few resilient princesses here, which is interesting. So I might actually grab a few of those, the pristine ones. Hopefully they're not, um, hybrids. Let's just double check. Yeah, that's a resilient meadows. Resilient corroded. I know these are all purebred. Let's, uh, let's have another look in here. So down here. Here somewhere, let's just see. It's a bit hard to tell whether these are purebred or not without taking them out and bealizing them. That's a purebred there. That's a purebred. And that's not. So put those ones back in there. And hang on to those ones. Okay, so I've got the um, this hive over here that I'm going to be doing this. Let's just take that sign there and we'll change that to say Lapis. So we have the cell frames in, in there for the max chance of uh, mutation. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go with the Resilient Princess. And we're going to put the water drone in there, breed those up, and then we'll see what the queen gives us. So, yeah, it might take several tries because I think it's like a 2% chance to get the mutation um, to the lapis, but we'll see how we go. Got my spare unwearies in there. Okay, the other thing is that's pretty cool is, um, let's just chuck that in there. Um, grab that honey out as well. The other thing that's pretty cool is the shiny bees, these actually produce uh, silver and the the other ones, the glittering bees, they actually produce, uh, they actually produce gold. So this should be cycling through again now. I've got them automated right now. So yeah, these ones actually produce gold, which is pretty awesome. Like over here, you can see um, they produce gold grains and silver grains, which is Awesome. And I've also put uh, an ender chest here. So basically I can chuck my honey in here and that will then um, feed it through to my base where I've got that squeezer going so it goes straight into the tank without having to run back and forth. But the other piece of good news is I can now make the final part for my um, apiarist's uh, suit. So we actually now have enough 
of the um well what were they called the uh, silk silk panels woven silk that's what it is yeah so if we look at the apiarist this is the final part that i needed to make no no <laughs> Ah! Uh, I swear I clicked on the pants. Well, hopefully we can uncraft these now. Five experience. Do it. Have I got experience? Yeah, I've got experience. Okay, come on. Give me that back. Give me that material back, bro. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, disaster averted, hopefully. That's what comes from clicking on things too fast. So... Oh, am I missing two of them? Maybe I don't have enough. I've got a little bit of silk. That was what was left in there. I think I have some back at the um back at the thing. But anyway, while we're here, <laughs> I swear I had enough. Let's just check how much honey I've got going here. So yeah, I've got two hundred twenty-two thousand three hundred buckets worth, which is. Good, because I'm going to need a lot of liquid honey, apparently, to make the um, the next level of beehive that we want to make once we once we start mass-producing diamonds, which is the end game that we're after. Let me just check here. Silk. Oh, there's some there, right? Yeah, that might be enough, because I only need two more of those things. So, and they take nine, they take nine each, I believe. So, yeah, that'll be plenty. We should, we should be able to finally get this put together. All right. A purist's pants. Woo! <laughs> finally, after all this time, all this breeding, all this beekeeping, all this tree breeding we finally managed to get enough silk wisps to put together a complete apiarist outfit so we can now put this on and uh check it out guys in my finery my beekeeping finery it looks pretty good i like it the vd craft uh textures uh make it look pretty cool and uh because i've got the um the special hat i can see the um I can't, I can't fly and use my jetpack, obviously, but I can see the mutated, um, the pollinated leaves and stuff like that. I want to try and reduce the amount of pollinated leaves because they do, um, they can cause lag and, and other problems. There's another one of those, those devilish butterflies up there. Hopefully that one doesn't multiply into 10,000 butterflies <laughs> cause issues. I um I didn't turn them off completely because I do want to collect them and I found another one, this one here, the spice bush swallowtail. So that one there, I don't know. We might have to um let's see if we can we might be able to catch that one. They're kind of hard though to catch. You kind of uh, have to wait till they rest. That one looks all kind of black and white, it's kind of cool. Anyway, we'll chase <laughs> we'll chase that later, but um that is where we are at right now. So basically, um, we've got our lapis going here. Hopefully, um, hopefully this is this is going to give us some mutations um, that are going to get us uh, the lapis. Um, let's just beelize these. I can't remember if these are nocturnal or not. This one is not nocturnal. Well, that sucks. And this one is not nocturnal either. Okay, well, we'll have to fix those traits later on. But for now, I'll just have to keep sleeping through the night and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I don't think it'll stack anymore because I've realized it. Never mind. We'll put those samples in here. And uh, we'd better sleep through the night so that they can get doing their thing for me. Okay. How's this one going? It's nearly done. Let's just wait on this one and see what we get. Um, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to look around for that butterfly because I kind of want to add that to my collection. There it is right there. 
Okay, let's get let's get the scoop out. Where'd it go? Where did it go? I can't see it anywhere. Elusive. Oh, there's another one. It's an orange one. I don't have that one either. I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot of different kinds. It's pretty cool. Except when they go crazy and uh, multiply too much. Yeah, you have to wait. You have to wait until they kind of rest. And then you can um, scoop them up with the scoop. But it's not quite as simple as that because it's kind of fiddly using the scoop to actually pick up the butterflies. Anyway. Let's see, is this one done yet? Yep, there we go. Okay, what do we got here? We've got... These look like just water and resilience, but if we bealize these, we might get lucky and find a hybrid lapis. Let's just see. This is a water resilient. Water resilient. Water resilient. Water resilient. Resilient water. Okay, well, we'll have to keep going. Let's try Let's try again. So, we'll go with the water resilient, purebred resilient drone and, and try again with that one. And I'll put all my duds in here. Sometimes these can be useful as breeding stock, but usually once I've bred the purebreds, I chuck them all out. Alright guys, so that is where we will leave this update for now, and I'll be back when we've... Uh, managed to get a lapis see you guys then all right guys welcome back once again to our crazy bee breeding uh experiment here now uh, another update so what i've done is i have managed to breed a whole bunch of purebred glittering bees so these are the ones that produce gold uh combs and they also allow me to breed with the Shining Bee, which I've also been able to get a bunch of purebreds over here going. And uh, once you breed the Shining and the Glittering Bee, what you get is the Valuable Bee, which gives us Iridium, uh, which is going to be awesome to have a, a steady way of producing that. That's uh, cheap, well, pretty much free on power, actually. So, yeah, I've got a stockpile of these ones, the shining ones, and the glittering ones go on here. And I've also created an extra shining uh, princess here over here so that I can have uh, a spare just in case something goes really wrong when I try to mutate those. Uh, over here, I've also got the lapis. So, I've got a good stockpile of the lapis bees here. And the lapis bees, you have to breed with the imperial bees. Now, I've actually got like one, two three four imperial hives go on there so that means they have four imperial uh, princesses as well and uh, basically if you breed the lapis with the imperial you have a chance of mutating to the diamond bee so it can actually produce diamonds uh, from bees which is going to be amazing and that has been our end goal with this whole bee um, bee breeding experiment here so um, we are very near the end of all the mutations that we've done. Uh, it's been pretty epic, but uh, there is a 2% chance of getting these mutations that we're about to uh, attempt. So um, fingers crossed, hopefully you manage to do it fairly quickly and efficiently. I guess what I'm gonna have to do here is I'm going to have to try to get an Imperial Princess at some point here. So I'll have to keep an eye on th these and wait until they get down um, to the bottom there. Um, but in the meantime, I don't think I have any, any Imperial Princesses over here. Let's just double check that. I might have some, like, some, um, hybrid Princesses. I just can't remember. I don't think I would have put any, any in here. Because I'm pretty much using them all. There's probably some drones. They're the, they're the slightly, sh these, this is what they look like, this color here, but there's a lot of similar ones, so it's kind of hard for them to stand out. I wish it just alphabetized them, you know what I mean? Well, it probably does, actually. Let's have a look at type. So that should split the princesses. 
Uh, common. Yeah, I don't think I've got any, so I'm going to have to wait for these to die off and produce a princess before we start on the diamond lapis um, sort of mutation. So what I might do is I might actually take these water bees out of here. I'm going to, uh, what will I do with them? I'll just leave them in my inventory for now, I guess. And let's get rid of these combs as well. So yeah, I've been pre producing a lot of different stuff here, which is awesome. I'm getting a real stockpile. A lot of this I've transferred to my ME system as well, and I'm still squeezing all the honey to get the, um, the liquid honey, which is in a giant tank uh, in the basement of my base. Um, we're even getting some extra silk wisps. Um, so I have my beekeeping outfit now, but there might be some other uses for those. Anyway, we have a spare hive here, so we're going to use this one for the, um, the valuable bee. So we'll get some soul frames so we have the extra chance of a mutation. Put those in here. And what I want to stockpile of is the, um, the glittering and the shining. So over here I had my spare shining, shining queen right here. I'll just wait for her to produce a princess. We'll take those out and uh, I'll put them in here. So they're the shinings, imperials. I'll keep... I'll probably use the princess from the shining and I'll use the shining or shiny shining. Yeah. I don't know why this one says shiny. Anyway, <laughs> doesn't really matter. So we've got tons of drones here, which is awesome. I think there's some extra ones there as well. So shining. Um, but we're going to use the princess from, from this one, actually. So we'll just put that in there. So I'll wait for this one. This one's nearly about to um to die. So let's see how. So I'll just take that sign. So this is going to be our um, valuable B. Actually, you know what? We'll make it on this one here. Val... Valuable. Okay, there we go. We've got our shining princess. Awesome. So take those as well. Shining drones, which we'll put in there so we don't get too badly a cluttered um, inventory. I'll chuck out those Rockies as well. I was using those to breed up the extra shining. Okay, take those out. Um, I'll use that one over there for the diamond mutations, so I'll get some extras with those, put those in there, and put those in there. So what we need here is the glittering and the shining, so let's get some glittering. Where did I have my glitterings at? Over here. So take a bunch of those. This, this bee is like super slow right now, and as you can see, it's not nocturnal either, so... There's some traits there that I'm going to have to try to breed in once I do get the ultimate diamond and valuable bees happening. Now, I'll just check my Imperials as well. So I don't want them cycling through again. This one over here. This one here. These two are like the closest to, um, to dying. Anyway, valuable. So here we go. We're going to do glittering and we're going to do shining. This one... And this one, they are going to breed, make some sweet bee love, and then they're going to uh, create the shiny queen. I don't know exactly how that works, but anyway, who am I to question the ways of the bee breeding cycle? So once she dies off, um, then we should have a chance, 2% chance of getting a, um, getting a valuable bee. Uh, but most likely what happens is it's a hybrid. One of them will be a hybrid, hopefully. Um, if we're really unlucky, we'll probably get a shiny or a glittery um, drone produced. Anyway, so yeah, let's just um, let's just check this. If I put some chocolate frames in there, that's going to produce more materials as well as make them die faster. So let's do that. And I'll check the other ones over here and see if they've got still got frames in them. This one needs frames. 
This one over here, the frames are practically dead. So I'll switch that out and check out the mostly dead chocolate frames there. Alrighty, so come on. Die quickly. This one, alright, this one's getting closer. So we'll take that out, stick it in there. Might as well collect the um all the combs and the and the other products here as well. Because we're gonna need a lot of this stuff that they're producing in order to make the upgraded the upgrade. This one keeps cross contaminating the noble because I think it goes across here. Probably because of the Minecraft direction glitch. It probably goes through that yellow one into here. That's why I don't like to have I like to have the same type of B. I'm linked up with the, because it connects here, unfortunately, due to, due to how close together they are. But anyway, uh, yeah, so two, two different B-types right next to each other when they're on the automatic cycling thing can sometimes send a different B across the wrong way. You have to, you have to watch out for that. Imperial, okay, it's still going. We got a silver comb. That's pretty cool. I'll just cycle this back through. I don't really need a lot of these these ones anymore, but and they don't really produce anything spectacular. The industrious are really good because they produce that that stuff, um, that pollen stuff. But the dripping comb is good because it produces the um, the extra. What's it called? Honeydew or something? Let's just put these through here. Put that jelly in there, we'll need that very shortly, and I'll chuck the honey drops in there. We'll, we'll be going through more honey drops now because we're going to be, like, checking out the bees and bealizing them. Okay, let's just check over here. Alright, come on. It's nearly dead. It's nearly dead. It's just got a little bit there to go. Um, I'll probably make this one over here will become the um, the diamond bee location. So I might put a sign down for that one in a second. Let's put it down now. And uh, yeah. So once we get these these done, that'll be like the end goal for us. We'll just um, build the upgraded bee beehives after that. And then we'll have to make sure they have all the best traits and we'll just crank out diamonds. <gasps> nope. Oh, that was close. It was nearly going to breed on me. Let's put that in there. So we have our Imperial Princess. And we need our Lapis. Let's get some of our Lapis drones here. So we got plenty of these, which is good. They're going to keep breeding away there. I'll just chuck out these Water Drones. Water Queen. Imperial Glittering. We'll hang on to those. We'll basically just keep exactly what we need kind of thing. Okay. That one's uh, that one's dying pretty quickly, which is really good. So we'll put our Lapis drones in here with the Imperial Princess. And uh, fingers crossed we, uh, we get some sort of diamond mutation from this one when that one dies out. So let's just, uh, we'll just have to wait on that one. Just go see how this is going over here. Put that silky propolis back through. I'm not sure what to do with this other propolis. Um, I'm not really sure what it's used for, but... We might have a look into that and see if there's anything good you can make with it. Let's have a look here. Propolis. Watery, watery propolis. Doesn't really tell me what to do with it though. Probably for some other from some of the other extra bees. Let's see if we can find what it's used for. So how do I make that sort of thing? Doesn't really tell me, does it? Juicy drops. There's some interesting stuff here. 
poison. Huh. It's pretty cool. Ectoplasm. Aperish database. Honey crystals. Healing frame. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know what to use those those other kinds of propolis. The silky propolis, I do know what that's for because we get the silky, we get the um the silky wisps from that. But I can't actually put these back through, back through the um centrifuge. It does it doesn't seem to do anything with them, so it's kind of weird. Slowly getting a few like uh, grains of materials here, like gold grains, silver grains, iron, all that stuff there. You need a lot of that though to actually get like with the gold grains. I think it's something like nine of those makes one gold nugget. So it's not the most like huge production. Okay, here we go. So we had our glittering and we had our shining uh, bees. And now we'll be able to see we've got a valuable drone. Look at that. Straight away. I'm sure it's going to be hybrid. We'll check that in a second. And these other ones are all glitterings. So we'll just take these down here. And let's be allies. This fella. So it's valuable shining. So that's actually pretty ideal because we can then try and breed that up again with the glittering princess. Let's just, just check these. So that's just a shining glittering hybrid. So is that one. And so is that one. So they're like. Not going to be much use for anything, but we'll try breeding these up. That should give us a slightly better chance because we've got a valuable hybrid there of getting it a valuable, um, uh, more purebred valuable bee, uh, or even if we're super lucky, a valuable hybrid princess. So we'll see how that goes. That that one's dying nice and fast, so that makes the process quicker. Over here, this is like halfway there, so we'll wait on that one. Let's just chuck that those combs in there. Let's just see if there's any more stuff here to collect. Just double check I've got the frames in here. Imperial, I should have chocolate frames in these, which I do, so that's good. Uh -huh. grab the dripping comb. This one's going again. These don't produce very quickly either. Unfortunately, the traits the traits probably aren't very good in those particular bees. But we can hopefully uh, mutate the traits to to be better once we get the valuable and the um and the diamond bee, which is gonna be awesome. Keep feeding this back in there so we get the liquid honey going. All right, so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to keep trying to mutate these ones to try and get the um, the bees that we're after. We might just wait on this one here and see if we do get a diamond hybrid of some kind out of that one because we've already got the we already got the um, the valuable hybrid, which is pretty awesome. Looks like the sun's setting as well. So I don't think these guys are nocturnal. I'm not too sure on that. But uh, let's just see how much production we've got going with the, um, the chestnuts. Yep, more than a thousand in there. So that's pretty awesome from our farm. And basically I've got, every time I come over here and I, I remember, I try and grab these impregnated sticks out so that I, and I keep putting them in my um, ME system. Let's just see how many we've got. Nearly a thousand of those, so that's pretty awesome for frame production. Because you pretty much always need frames, even later on. Um, once you build the upgraded beehive, which is the multi-block structure, that thing doesn't actually need frames to uh, operate super fast and produce a lot of stuff. But if you actually put frames in it, it kind of even increases its stacks on top of that. So it's a good idea to still have frames in it. Uh, but you can more or less set and forget those, and they don't take any power, so it's pretty awesome, actually. Alright, so, let's see. 
This one's third, got a third of its life cycle left. This one's still going. Let's see how much uh, liquid honey we've got in our in our tanks down down below here. I'm slowly getting my um, liquid XP back as well. Like <laughs> I've got a fair bit of it here, but this tank used to be full. And then I think when I made when I enchanted my armor that I that I um, made with those galactic craft materials, that used up a ton of it trying to get. All the all those awesome enchants on it, like multiple enchants for every piece. But yeah, here's our liquid honey. So, two hundred seventy thousand seven hundred milli buckets right now. That is a lot. I'm not sure exactly how much we're going to need, but I think we're going to need quite a lot to make the. Because uh, I'm going to make to start with, I'm going to make two of the upgraded beehive structures. One for the valuable bees and one for the diamond bees, and I'm going to put them right in the middle here. Um, I'm not sure how much it's going to take, but a lot, I think. So I'm going to try and produce as much as I can um, in advance of needing it. Chuck that back in there. All right, come on. Let's just check these. There's a little bit of raw jelly there. Come on. Okay, we'll wait on this one. It's nearly done. Look how many flowers there are around here. These just grow naturally around the beehives. Like some of these are quite rare. These ones right here, the, the glow flower. These um, are usually twilight forest and they actually glow at night, which is pretty awesome. So um, that's kind of a cool side effect. Some of the other flowers are pretty cool as well. I like these orange ones. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting side effect of the bee breeding. It's, they um, grow in a fairly big area around it as well. Look at all this. Imagine it looks pretty cool from above. I can't actually fly right now because I'm wearing my beekeeping suit, which doesn't have a jetpack. All right, getting close on that one. Getting close. Imagine if we had a tornado again. <laughs> Remember how much destruction that did when that came through? That was crazy. Just a massive swathe of materials like... Everything in its path got like sucked up and obliterated. Fortunately, I missed my um my base, but it's, it's a possibility that it, that we could get another one come through here and just destroy everything. Okay, just one little bit left on this one. Let's just eat a potato while we're waiting here. There we go. Oh, it's turned into a lapis. Maybe these are hybrids. Let's just check them out. Lapis Imperial. Lapis Imperial. Damn it. This was, this is going to be the problem, B. I can see that now already. So, yeah, we're trying to do Lapis Imperial here. Um, we'll put that one in with another Imperial. And I'll put these spare ones in here, just in case I need... Need to use those later on, and we'll just breed this one up. So, yeah, this one is probably be, probably going to be the one that takes a lot longer. Like, that's what happened last time with the shining and valuables. No, sorry, the shining and glittering. Like, the glittering, which is, produces gold, that one took ages to, um, to mutate, whereas the shiny I got almost straight away, pretty much. So, let's just start. Uh, this one's nearly dead as well. You we might as well have a look at this one. I bet you, there we go, look at that, valuable princess, valuable drone, shining drone. So this one, yeah, this one's um, going pretty quick. That's still a hybrid, and that is a hybrid, but the primary trait on both of those is valuable. So we have a good chance of getting a purebred out of this next one. And I'll put that in there. So yeah, we'll wait on that one. This one's going to take a while again here, so... I'll come back with an, another update shortly, guys, and uh, we'll see where we're at 
with breeding these valuable and diamond bees. I'll see you then. All right, just another quick update, guys. The diamond mutation. We finally got one. In fact, we got two at once here. So let's just check out uh, the traits on these guys. Uh, they're probably going to be hybrids. Diamond Imperial Hybrid. Uh, not very good fertility, which is unfortunate. And a Diamond Imperial Hybrid um, there as well. Some good uh, some good traits down here, though, uh, which, is, uh, which is cool. Anyway, that's all I have to work with right now. So I'm going to have to breed them back up in here. And uh, the other thing over here, guys, check it out. So the valuable over here, um, we haven't quite got, like, the, um, the purebred... Um, the purebred happening um, to the point where we want right now. But I've noticed it has produced a platinum comb as well, which is pretty awesome. So I believe once we process this over here in um, the centrifuge, what we should get is a chance of getting... Let's just see. Let's just see what we get here. What are we going to get? Platinum grains. Sweet. So I think we take the platinum grains and then um, I think we can make iridium out of that uh, once we get a certain number in the crafting grid. Let's just go have a look here and see if we can um, find the recipe. Iridium. Iridium ore. Page one of one. It's not exactly showing you. It's maybe um, platinum. Platinum nugget. Anyway, I guess we're probably going to have to wait until we've got nine of those things. To, uh, to work out if we can actually craft, because it's not showing me right here. It's not showing me um, any recipes with that dust, but I'm pretty sure what we're going to do is we're going to craft it up in the crafting grid and we'll probably get like a small amount of it or something like that. Uh, it'd be good if nine of, the, nine of the grains gave us one iridium. That would be super awesome, but I don't know how lucky we are with that. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll figure that out anyway as we go here. I'm also trying to breed up some extra, extra lapis um, princesses just, uh, just in case something goes wrong with the diamond over here and I'll lose my diamond, I'll lose my, um, I'll lose the lapis princess from this one. Uh, it's probably not going to be necessary, but it's good to have a few backups. Anyway, that's where we're at right now, guys. So I'm going to try to uh, pure, get these uh, purebred, this diamond uh, bee and the valuable queen um, or the valuable bees. And then we'll be just about ready to um, to uh, start on the next phase, which is our upgraded beehives. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. I'll be back when we've made some more progress. All right, we are back, guys. So final update here on our breeding of the different uh, bees. And uh, we have finally got to a stage where we've got a nice, stable, thoroughbred uh, diamond bee coming through. So I've set up two... Uh, beehives here and I've got a bunch of drones uh, from these guys. I'll show you guys the traits that I've managed to breed into these. So basically um, what I've done is I've crossbred these uh, with some of my other bees that had the four times fertility. Actually not that that really matters. What I mainly wanted to get out of these was the uh, diurnal nocturnal flyer cave. So that lets um, these guys continue breeding and producing uh, diamonds um, for us. Uh, even when they're undercover, uh, or if it's raining, or if it's at, at night, uh, as well as during the daytime. So that's pretty awesome. Plus they have um, a plus or minus two uh, temperature and humidity tolerance. So they're a pretty pretty uh, awesome breed of bee. The only, th the only downside with these right now is the production speed, which is slower. So I'd like to make that faster because this affects the amount of materials that they they'll actually produce for me. Um, they'll produce more materials in a faster time if we speed that up. So I might actually um, delve into genetics possibly in the next episode to get that happening. Uh, the other thing is the valuable bees. I've done something similar with these guys. So I've actually got a stable thoroughbred um, valuable bee over here as well. And these guys also have... Um, 
pretty much the same characteristics that I've bred into them, except for the humidity tolerance, which isn't a big deal because I don't live in a swamp or a desert. Uh, but I've just realized, guys, we were trying to get um, iridium out of these guys. But I've realized that you actually need uh, Greg Tech installed to actually be able to process uh, the platinum into iridium. So I've kind of bred these um, for no reason. <laughs> we can produce platinum, but I don't know if there's a whole lot of uses for platinum um, really um, apart from maybe one or two recipes but anyway we're going to have an awesome diamond bee happening and in the next episode what i'm going to be doing guys is i am going to be building uh, a proper aviary uh, right here in the middle maybe two of them and we'll set those up to pump out some diamonds for us so if we look over in in the um area over here where we've been producing stuff by centrifuging uh you can see we've actually got um 23 diamond fragments now, I believe if we take these over here and we actually put them in like that, we actually get uh, diamonds. Now, that that's giving us an industrial diamond right there, but I just wonder, let's just grab those out of there. And actually, no, hang on. If we get the industrial diamond like that and then put it back here in the crafting table, I think it gives us a regular diamond. So um, nine of these shards gives us one diamond, basically. So... All this time, basically, with the shards that we've collected, we've made two diamonds. <laughs> but the great thing about the bees is you set and forget, and basically, um, they don't take any power. So it's a really awesome way of just slowly building up your collection of diamonds while you're playing, which is awesome. Okay, guys, so that's where we'll leave it for this episode. I hope you're enjoying these Mega Bee episodes. And uh, next episode, we're going to finish off the bee production by creating the alveary and maybe dabbling in the genetics to get the perfect super bee to produce diamond for us. And then after that will be our final episode for the Intergalactic Adventure series, uh, which has been going on a while now. It's been a lot of fun, but we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Slippery Jim out.